What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2024 Toyota Tundra. This one is the Capstone Crew Max, finished off in magnetic gray. MSRP is $82,500. Big shout out to Flow Toyota Statesville for providing this new Tundra iForce Max for today's video. Take a look at their website, links down below. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Toyota Tundra iForce Max is the 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6 with the hybrid system. This makes 437 horsepower with 583 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission, has four-wheel drive, an automatic limited slip rear differential, max towing capacity is about 10,300 pounds, curb weight is 6,200 pounds. This truck even runs on a 32.2 gallon fuel tank, so you're looking at 19 miles per gallon in the city with 22 out on the highway. Overall length is 233.6 inches with a wheelbase at 145.7, width is 80.2, and height is 78 inches. For some off-road capabilities, approach angle is 21 degrees, ground clearance is 8.5 inches, and then departure angle is 24 degrees. This Tundra also features an aluminum reinforced composite bed, 5.5 foot in length with 20.9 inches in depth. Moving on to the styling with the Toyota Tundra Capstone, this is the top of the line luxury focus trim. You can see a lot of silver accents throughout it. We have a nice set of LED headlights with a quad beam, massive daytime running lights in them, and the grille is huge. You can see all the polished silver color with some gloss black. The Toyota logo has the blue accents around it, indicating this is a hybrid. We have Tundra stamped into the front, along with the LED fog lights, all of your parking sensors, and then more body color down below. I like the overall shape of the new Tundras. They're definitely very muscular trucks. Got a massive hood with some sharp body lines fading towards the windshield. I like just how large it is. Certainly adds to the aggression. Up on top, we get that iForce Max logo as well with some black trim. Throughout the front corner, you're gonna see how the body color flows its way to the fender arches, and we even get a set of 22 inch wheels. Really nice design with a two-tone color, multi-spoke look. And you can see really sharp lines throughout this front fender. Got the capstone badge, along with some silver trim on the lower portion of these doors. We have chrome for the door handles, along with chrome mirror caps, LED turn signal, along with an integrated side view camera. You can see more chrome trim surrounding these windows, and then black for the center of these doors. Got a panoramic roof up on top, and being the crew max, you have the full-size four doors, with that shorter bed, it has a really good proportion to it. I like how the sharp lines in front match what you get on the bedside. You can see more of the body colored for the fender arches, then a really large set of LED taillights. You can see the nice triple beam design for them, and then lots of cool contours throughout the tailgate. We get Tundra in the center stamped with some chrome inlays, your grab handle up on top, and then a combination of plastic and silver trim for this rear bumper. We have the trailer hitch and all the plugs by the license plate. And overall the Tundra styling, this is a great looking truck. I think it really fits with the modern world in design. Finishing up, we got a chrome exhaust tip on the far left side. Moving to the key fob, super basic with the tailgate button, lock and unlock. Of course, if you keep it in your pocket, you have the remote access, smart key feature. Capstone gets a beautiful two-tone interior with the gray and black. If we take a look at the door panel now, finished off in that two-tone, you can see some nice white stitching in the upper portion, some padding up here, all that light gray color for the insert throughout the door, aluminum color release handle, all the controls for the windows and mirrors. You have memory seating as well. A little bit of brown wood trim, more storage space, more storage down below, and then part of the audio system as well. Nice padding on that armrest. You have all of your power controls for the driver's seat on this left side. You even have this button for the leg rest that will pop forwards. On the seats, we have contrast stitching, beautiful materials. I like all the perforations throughout the center and a nice stitching pattern throughout the base as well as the back. You have more of this perforations making its way up the backrest with a nice design for these headrests as well. You're gonna see perforated leather throughout the steering wheel with some nice silver trim. Of course, power operations for the tilt and telescoping and then some gloss black accents as well with faux stitching. And then now sitting inside the Toyota Tundra Capstone, keep my foot on the brake, press the power button, the electronics will turn on, followed by that engine. 
Taking a look at the gauge cluster, you're gonna see a full LCD display with the tack right in the center with your speed and then the iForce as well as the Max on the right side. That's a turbo boost gauge as well as your electric motor power. Also have a screen on the left side with a few vitals within this truck. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have a lot of controls. You can toggle left and right, and you can see a few things in that center screen like messages. We have some of the safety settings that will pop up within the vehicle. A few more items right here. Then you have audio, navigation, and then the eco information. So nice to see a little bit of configurations. On the far right side, we're gonna get all the cruise control settings, lane assist, distance pacing, things like that. I even like the white stitching you get on the steering wheel. On the right stock, you have all the controls for the windshield wipers, headlights are over on the left side, and then down below, you can see the bed dome light, automatic high beams, fuel release, heated steering wheel, and a few more icons. We have some silver trim for the air vent with some wood trim, and there's the heads-up display system, some nice leather material across the dashboard with storage up on top and a 12-volt plug. Then you can see more of that wood trim with a little bit of gloss and silver, Really nice design with all this light color with the stitching. Certainly looks like a luxurious vehicle. I kind of get a little bit of Range Rover vibes. Has a really nice look. The screen right here is what you would expect on any of the modern Toyotas. So of course, you know, you have to set it up when you first buy the car. Massive screen. You have the navigation that will pull up full screen, audio controls, phone integration. And then under vehicle, you have trip info. You're able to view a few different things. Going back, we have vehicle alerts and then settings down below. So kind of what you would expect on any modern Toyota, you kind of get everything you need, nothing more, nothing less. And then if we go in reverse now, we have a massive backup camera, as you can tell. This is one big screen, full top-down view on the right, all of your different guidelines are able to adjust. Take a look at what's in the bed. We have different cameras for especially off-roading, which is really nice to see. So you really do have a good view around this truck. So pretty cool to see everything. Going back into park, that will all shut off. And then underneath that, we have physical climate controls. You're gonna see all these toggles right here. We have temperature, you can easily adjust. You're able to sync it, fan speed as well. You have a few more controls, heated and ventilated seating, all of those other icons for defrost, volume control on the left side with a USB port on the right. And then down below, we have some of your trailer assist, a shortcut to the camera view. You can get a 360 view of your truck, traction control as well. And then storage, wireless phone charging, electronic parking brake, your nice gear selector, and then all of your four-wheel drive controls with different drive modes. We have your tow and haul mode, and then you can toggle this for the actual drive modes themselves. We have a sport, normal, as well as an eco mode. We have two cup holders on the right side with a nice wood material. And then you can see more of this wood and all the cool leather color. If we open this up, we have a little bit of storage, storage here, and then you can slide that for access into here. And then you can also open this up and we have a lot of space in the glove box. There's even a spot for some change and USB ports. On the far right side now, glove box is a large shelf, as you would expect. And then one last look at the interior. Certainly premium, I think it really does fit the 80 something thousand dollar price tag. It feels like a very high end vehicle inside. We have a massive panoramic roof, along with that sunshade, all of your controls. We also have the icon right here for the power sliding rear glass. So if we press that, the whole window will go downwards, which is a great touch. And then if we go ahead, we can open up the sunshade and get all the light inside. And then finishing it up, we have a nice frameless mirror. You can pull that and we have the LCD camera. There's garage door buttons under it as well. Moving on to the rear seat space, the Crewmax has very large rear doors that open up at a nice 90 degree angle. You're gonna see all the same interior for the door panel with the wood trim, the light color, all the stitching as well storage down below, and then even the same seating materials for the back seat with the cool stitching, two-tone color. Headrest will fold down as well for better visibility. And you can see how large that glass is. We can also pull down this. You have cup holders along with your armrest, and then heated and ventilated seats back here. You have extra cup holders, air vents, different USB plugs, storage behind all these seats. And then the base of the seat, you can lift upwards. Being the hybrid, there's not any storage under here. However, with the seats locked up, you can still at least use this to haul a bunch of items, not damaging your upholstery. And then we can pull this strap up top, pull the seats downwards. They will fold nice and flat. You're gonna see the JBL subwoofer here, and then a little bit of storage behind the passenger side. All right, sitting in the back seat now of the Tundra Crew Max, 
This is a big truck, of course, competing with F-150s, GMC Sierras. Price point and interior, honestly, they feel pretty nice. This is a good place to be. Sitting here, I have good headroom at five foot 11, driver's seat at my height, plenty of room as well. The seats themselves are really solid feeling. Like you really feel nice and high up, well supported, good armrest on the left and right. There's even a set of manual sun shades. So this has a luxury touch to it. We have grab handles with a cool vinyl handle to them. Kind of feels like leather, which is a nice touch. And then moving on to the tailgate, we can just press the button back here. It's gonna soft open, super easy. There is a step that will pop outwards from the rear bumper to help you climb inside of this bed. This one does have a spray and bed liner, which is a really nice touch to see over the composite. You're gonna see LED dome lights. You're gonna see three different tracks, different tow hooks as well. And then on this far right side, we can pop that open for a nice conventional three prong outlet. Nice size bed in here, of course. You have Tundra on the top of the tailgate and it doesn't really weigh all too much. We can lift this up and close it. All right, setting off now in the Toyota Tundra. This is a big truck. You can tell it's got some size to it. You are nice and high up off the ground. Huge hood, you can see. I like how just the dashboard looks as well. It just feels like a tough truck. It's a nice place to be. Great visibility too over your left and right shoulder. I mean, really just honestly an easy truck. It's a big truck, so it's a little harder to place and park. Obviously you gotta get used to something like this. However, this seems just like a comfortable place to be. Armrests are in a great place. The seats are very nicely padded. Drive modes, I wouldn't say do a crazy amount of differences. However, in sport mode, when you first get on the gas, I mean, you can spin the tires on this truck. This thing has some serious get up and go. Even in the EV mode or the eco mode, you know, I like how the electronic system works in this truck to where you get that little bit extra electric assist and then you get that twin turbo power as well. It sounds like a V8 in here too. Has a good rumble to the engine. I'm sure it's piped in through the speakers, but it sounds cool in this truck and it doesn't not feel like a truck. I know modern trucks are getting a little bit too soft. You know, you're not getting a V8 anymore, especially in the Tundra, but nothing about the way this drives makes you think that. You feel like you're in something tough and rugged. Obviously you have the capabilities to tow a lot, haul a lot, but you still get the luxuries in the capstone. This is supposed to be the cream of the crop. This is their top trim level. And this feels just like the rivals that are also about the same price point. So I like that aspect where you do get the luxury feeling and yet you still get a truck at the end of the day. So this is kind of that sweet spot if you just want a very refined vehicle and yet you want to use it for maybe workhorse stuff. If it's your work truck, you know, maybe for a job site or even just for your family hauling a utility trailer, a boat, whatever you need to do. So it's a nice place to work, nice place to be as well. The physical controls I like, it makes it simple for all your climate controls. This screen is huge. And the real benefit of that screen is the camera system. Aside from the cameras, the screen is big without really doing all too much, I would say. Toyota's on the simple side for sure. Gauge cluster, same thing, pretty simple, but does what you need to do. Really no complaints. This is a good place to be. It just feels cool. It's got great tech. I love the camera up there, the panel roof and everything. I mean, this, this is a trucky truck, I would say. It just feels cool to be in here. And I like the capstone, the trim level. It just feels super premium. And I think it's very well worth the price point. It's just a good place to be. And I feel like if you spend 80 grand on this, I don't think you're gonna think you spent too much. It feels amazing in this, pretty reliable. They've had a few little issues with these engines. However, it has been very minimal, like a handful of trucks. So I don't think I would let that scare you. I think overall it's a pretty solid truck to get. And I'm just incredibly comfortable. I feel very right at home in this truck definitely a good way to go. All right, so turning around to my perspective, honest thoughts with the Toyota Tundra. I like the hybrid system. Now we've had an iForce Max Sequoia as a press car once or twice, and the hybrid works really cool. It's not like a full EV hybrid where you can just go in electric mode, things like that. It's basically an assistance. The slow speed right now, we're in EV. The motors are kind of propelling this truck to where the engine doesn't have to do the inefficient stuff, the slow speed things the hybrid helps out. Right now the engine's kicked in and we're getting up to speed just slowly like normal. So I think Toyota does a really good job with their hybrids. Of course, they've been doing this for over 20 years. They know what they're doing. And when you apply it to a full size truck, it's not necessarily all about gas mileage. I know, you know, people think you hear hybrid, it must be a really good gas mileage. Honestly, it's not that good. You're talking about 20, <laughs> which is decent, but nothing too amazing. 
realistically, it's just that extra assistance to where when you compare this to a V8, it is more economical than the V8, and you have a ton more horsepower, torque, and capabilities. So it's a really good bump up without just giving you a bigger, bigger V8, which would be like 10 miles per gallon. So it's nice to make it a more efficient motor. It just makes the truck itself more usable. You can go farther, you can do more with it, and it's just easier even on the drivetrain components given the slow speed stuff, the electrics is helping out. When you're coasting, once again, the engine's not really doing anything, the electronics are doing it. So the hybrid system's cool. I like it a lot. I think it's a really good blend for a truck like this. And I don't think there's really anything to hate about it. The only thing you can maybe think about, the screen, they're huge, which it looks good in this interior. I think it fits very well. There's just not really all too much on it, aside from the camera. The camera tech on it, that's where the screen comes into play. Other than that though, I mean, the screen is kind of just basic, nothing really fancy. But Toyota, that's what they're about. They're not about being the most fanciest vehicles out there. They're supposed to be functional and reliable. And yet, this capstone is very nice. The interior, I mean, the things you touch in this truck, it feels really nice. I don't think there's a real complaint with the truck. It is big, it's kind of bulky feeling, but in a good way. It feels just tough and rugged. And I like that aspect. I like the hood contours. I like sitting in this vehicle. And honestly, when you look at the big trucks that this competes with, this is really cool. I just, I don't know, it's a good blend. Of course, General Motors has the V8, Chrysler now with the Rams, you know, they're gonna give you that turbo inline six. So you have very different offerings now from all the different manufacturers. V6 wise, I think this is significantly better than Ford's EcoBoost. Feels more tough, it sounds more solid, probably significantly more reliable, even with issues that have popped up. I think this is a way better motor. I love the V8 from General Motors and the Hurricane engine from Ram is definitely a beast as well. So you have some cool options in this segment. I think Toyota Tundra, it's one of the best. It is certainly a truck to consider and look at. And I don't think you're really gonna complain with what you get with a Toyota Tundra, especially when you look at price point, starts around $40,000. So you have a pretty wide variety of Toyota Tundras that are really gonna fit any budget. Even with a base model closer to 40, you're still getting a lot of truck for the money. So I think that's kind of it then for the 2024 Toyota Tundra, the capstone, their luxury one. Have they hit the nail on the head with offering you a true luxurious truck for the money? I think it's up there. The Sierra from General Motors is a really nice truck, especially when you go the top of the line one. Um, I'd say that might be a little bit more luxurious feeling than this. However, you know, Toyota does offer a lot more with probably a little bit better dependability things like that and you have the more modern uh, hybrid drivetrain so i'd say it's definitely up there worth a look if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button stay tuned for plenty more content and check out flow toyota of statesville big shout out to them for providing this truck for today's video i'll see you guys in the next video